As you get ready to take your Praxis test, you might think about where you'd want to take it. Do you want to take it at a testing center or do you want to take it at home? So that with the Praxis, most cases you can take that test at home and not have to travel to a testing center. So in this video, we're going to talk about all the differences. What do you need to know? How is it different at home or a testing center? It's actually a totally different experience and there's some things that are really important to know. So my name is Jeff Calarisa. I'm a test prep expert and a former teacher. And I've taken a lot of these tests both at a testing center and at home. So I'm going to share everything I've learned so you can make a good choice for you. So first thing to do is to verify that your test is even available for at-home testing. Probably is, but you should definitely check out the ETS website. That link is in this notes of this video just mm -hmm. to make sure. Ever since COVID, Praxis uh, exams have been much more readily available to take at home. So that's step one. All right, second thing is there's a few eligibility rules. So if you can't meet these following criteria, you're not eligible to take the test at home. First thing is you have to live in the US, Canada, or a US territory, okay? So if that's okay, then you need a desktop or a laptop computer. You can't use a tablet, you can't test on your phone. Um, there's a couple of other requirements around this, like you can't use a Chromebook. If a Chromebook is the only laptop you have, that won't work. You have to get access to a different one. You don't have to necessarily buy a different one. You just have to access to it for the test. Um, there's a couple of tech requirements too, like you need a microphone, you need a camera, um, a few things like that. And you also are going to have to download some software. So know that that's a part of the test at home experience. But if all that's okay, then testing at home is on the table for you. Maybe you can test at home, but do you want to? Should you? Let's start with a few quick pros of testing at home and what that's like. The first thing is there's generally more test times available. So if you go to the ETS website and check out the available test slots and days, um, you may find that there's just more selection. There's more times during the day, more days during the week than some testing centers. Some testing centers, for example, aren't open on weekends, but uh, with testing at home, you can often find a weekend slot. That will vary by test. Um, the second thing is transportation. Uh, you may not live all that close to a testing center. I once had to drive about an hour to get to a testing center when that was what I had to do for that test. No matter what, no matter where you live, home is closer than any testing center unless you, I guess, live at a testing center. Um, so that's another thing to consider. And then third thing is you might be more relaxed. Um, you know, at different times in my life, I've found that I'm just going to be more relaxed when I take that test if I'm not uh, traveling to uh, like another place. I can do it at home where I'm more comfortable. So if that's you, then that's a great pro of testing at home. All right, so what about some of the pros of going to a testing center? Well, uh, the first thing is there's no tech setup. When you get to the testing center, all of the tech will be set up for you. There's nothing to download. You don't have to worry about your computer being the right kind of computer for the test. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is the sort of like testing environment. Um, for me, there's times where I just felt like I could get in a better headspace for taking the test if I was traveling somewhere else and able to sort of compartmentalize that test. Um, this was also the case when I had very young kids in the house and testing at home just wasn't really as practical. So having a more professional testing environment really helped. And then um, the third thing is really just about privacy. Um, if you're going to test at home, you're basically going to have to like let a remote proctor into your home. Um, for me, I didn't always want to have to do that full room scan that's required to, to show the person more than I wanted about where I live. So if you don't feel like cleaning up your house or you don't care, then don't worry about that. But if you are a little bit more private and that's an important consideration for you, then a testing center may be better. So those are the quick notes, the quick pros of testing at home or a testing center. Now let's go a little bit deeper into what you can actually expect when you choose either testing at home or testing at a center. Let's start with the at-home testing experience. So the first thing to know, the most important thing to know is when you're testing at home, they take security very seriously. There's a lot of safeguards in place to make sure that you're not cheating on your test. Let's go through them. All right, so here's what they'll have you do. The first thing is you need to have a clear workspace or table. Um, that means no stray papers, um, nothing with any notes on it. They're going to want to check for that. Um, second thing is you can have a second screen. So if you have a desktop or a laptop computer and you have it attached to a second screen, you're just going to have to unplug that. Um, third thing is apps on your device. You can't have anything else running 
they will check to make sure you're not running anything in the background, no matter how unrelated it might be. Um, hats. Can't wear anything on your head. Uh, unless it's a religious head covering, no hats of any kind. Um, internet connection has to be fast. Uh, that maybe goes without saying. Um, then you also need a camera and a microphone. They need to be able to see you, be able to hear you. Um, and then there's a couple of downloads. So they're going to have you download software that allows you to um, take the test while they monitor you. So they're both monitoring you. They're also monitoring your computer, making sure that nothing's going on uh, in the background there. And then you're also going to download a chat tool. So that just allows you a different way to communicate with your proctor. All right, once that's all set up, they're going to verify that you are who they think you are. So the way they do that is they have you take a picture of yourself and a picture of your photo ID, make sure that matches, supposing that's all good. Next thing is you wait for a live proctor. So this can really vary. Uh, I've had it happen where that live proctor is pretty much right there, ready to go. Um, I've had to wait 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, one time I had to wait about 45 minutes for that proctor to show up. So a good tip here is to allot yourself extra time, just knowing that that's a part of the process. Um, you may just have to wait for a while for that person to become available. That time does not count against your test time. So don't worry about that. But let's say you set up a babysitter to only cover, you know, just enough time for you to take that test. You have to factor this part in. Um, or maybe you have plans after the test. So budget yourself maybe an extra 30 minutes, maybe an extra 60 minutes, just for some of that time that uh, isn't actually taking the test, but is important and is a part of the process, normal part of the process. Once you get that live proctor, they're going to come in and do a few different things. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to take remote control of your computer. So this is a little weird, but they basically take over your computer, check for any apps that shouldn't be running, make sure you're all set up and good to go. So just making sure that you're not cheating and making sure that you're you're good to go with the test. Um, the next thing they're going to do is have you do a room scan. So this, again, making sure you're not cheating. They're going to have you um, take your camera, turn all around, see the room that you're in, see the space you're in. This is where it kind of can feel like a little bit of an invasion of privacy, but it's a necessary part of the experience. Um, and then the next thing they're going to have you do is check your, your table or your desk. So um, they do this in a couple of different ways. I've seen this different ways. Sometimes they'll have you take your phone and uh, take a picture uh, of your desk and uh, throw that in the chat. Sometimes they'll have you use like a mirror to kind of reflect back into the webcam. So there's a few different ways. Um, I've also had them have me Actually, most of the time they've had me go like under the desk so they can see that there's nothing like just, you know, on the other side of the desk or around the desk. Um, so it's it's pretty thorough. So know that when you go in and this is going to be, you know, they're going to see every kind of inch around you. And uh, just to be sure that there's there's no papers, there's no answers anywhere or anything like that. All right. And here's an important tip. These proctors, they're human and they're not all the same. So I have had different experiences, some things that uh, from one proctor to another just wasn't the same. So an example of that is you're supposed to be able to have water to drink. Like there's, uh, there's no rule against that, but I've had a proctor say, you, I can't have my glass of water on the desk. So you can't really argue. You just have to kind of roll with it. So, um, I think it's important just to be flexible and to know just, again, they're human. They may interpret the rules differently and, uh, don't get stressed by that. Just uh, know that that may happen um, and you can't, you won't get the same experience every single time. So after all of this, you're ready to start the exam. So I think it's important to go through uh, all these steps because this does take some time and it's important to know that's coming. So it's not just like, okay, my test is at 9 a.m. I'm going to start taking the actual test at 9 a.m. But once you get through this part, you jump in, you take the test. Um, once you start the exam, important thing is you have to stay on camera. So um, you have to be basically looking at the camera. So like what I'm doing right now is going to get my test flagged because it looks like I'm reading something that's not looking at the screen where the test is. So you can't do that. You also want to make sure you're not drifting out of the frame, anything like that. Um, if they can't see you, they don't know what you're doing. So that's very important. So make sure you're looking at the camera. Make sure you are staying in the frame all the time and then you'll be good and that's pretty much it when you are done with your exam you'll use that chat tool that you downloaded message the proctor say i'm done and then you're good to go so that's pretty much it about the at-home testing experience let's talk about what happens next if you go to a testing center 
So what can you expect if you go to a testing center? So my experience with these is in California and Colorado, though probably your experience is going to be pretty similar no matter where you are. First thing is pretty much the same. You go to the ETS website, you find a day and a time that works for you, and you sign up for your test. So that's straightforward. Um, thing that, that's important with a testing center is think about the time of day, think about the day of week in terms of traffic. So depending on how far you have to go, where you live, what the traffic situation is, make sure you're not going to be sitting in traffic, stressing out that you're going to be late for your exam. Uh, so one time where I had to travel about an hour to take a test, this was in Colorado, uh, it was rush hour, which was a bad idea. So um, you don't want to have to miss your start time um, because of traffic. So here's a tip. Two of the testing centers that I went to were in these nondescript office parks where all the buildings looked the same and there were no signs on the door. So I was frantically searching around trying to find where my test was supposed to be. So um, I would recommend going beforehand if you can, going a couple days before, finding the exact address, not just the street address, but what suite number it is. Where in this office park is this actual testing center? Um, and then get there early. So never hurts to be early, uh, maybe 15 to 30 minutes early, just so you can find parking. You're not rushing uh, in case anything goes wrong. Uh, you want to give yourself some time to sort of get calm and centered before your test. One more tip about going to a testing center. If you get a ride from someone, know that they can't come in with you. Most of these testing centers don't have like a waiting area so they can just sit around and wait for you to finish your test. They're going to have to wait outside, wait in the car, leave and come back, and they're not going to be able to communicate with you. So that's just a, a part of the process where you're going to be able to basically be out of touch until the end of your test. So when you go, remember to bring your photo ID. Also, remember to print out that admission ticket that you got when you registered for the test. Look at that admission ticket before you go. Make sure it says the right date the right time, the right place. Just double check to make sure it all matches so that you don't end up being there a day late and miss your test. Um, and then try to have as little else with you as possible. If you're taking a test that requires a calculator, you do not need to bring one. They will provide you an online calculator. So when you go inside, they're gonna verify that you are who you say you are, they'll check your photo ID, all of that. Then they're gonna go through a security procedure with you. So. You know, you're not at home, so they don't have to see your bedroom, all that stuff, but they still want to make sure that you're not cheating in any way. So this is a bit of an involved process that um, can be uh, a little bit intrusive. So the first thing, they're going to take anything that you have with you. So that means your phone. They'll they'll take this stuff away and they'll put it in like a, some type of like locker. Um, if you have a purse, any type of bag. Um, you also can have a watch. That uh, surprised me. So um, no type of watch, no type of jewelry. So like a wedding ring is fine, but any other like bracelets, anything like that, they're going to take from you if you have it. So it's better yet, just don't bring it. Don't wear it that day. Um, also clothing accessories. So scarves, uh, hair ties, uh, anything really in your hair. I, it's not really a problem that I had, but if, if you do have hair that you need to, to <laughs> secure some way, uh, find a different way that doesn't involve putting any object in your hair. So that's not all. Next thing they're going to do is make sure that you don't have any type of listening device or uh, recording device or answers anywhere kind of like squirreled away on your body. So that means they're going to have you pull up your sleeves, have you pull up your pants legs. Um, they'll also probably pat you down. So that's a thing that um, is not as intrusive when you know it's coming. I guess it's still intrusive, but um, it's good to know that it's coming. That's a normal part of the process just to make sure there's there's nothing uh, anywhere on you that is uh, you could use to cheat. And then know that they'll take this stuff away from you, anything that you have on you, and you'll just not have access to it till after the test, but they'll give it back to you when you're done with the test. Next thing is to talk about what you wear, just like regular clothing. I recommend wearing layers. It, I had one testing center, it was pretty chilly, so it was nice to have like a sweater or something like that. Um, but you know, you never know what the temperature is going to be. Um, know that if you have like a sweater or something on at some point you get warm, you want to take it off, they're going to take your sweater away. So, um, that's just, that's just how they, they run security, um, at the testing center. Oh, and last thing about this experience, if you wear glasses, um, that's fine. You can, you can bring your glasses in. They want you to be able to see the test, but they're going to take them from you, uh, as they go through the security process and they're going to check, um, they, they rub this thing on just to make sure it's not like, uh, any type of cheating through your glasses. So. That's pretty much it. 
one question that people ask is about the bathroom, like taking a bathroom break. So with most cases, with most tests, uh, you can go and use the bathroom at the testing center, but your clock for your test will not stop. So I recommend go before you get to the test uh, or before you go in to take the test at the testing center. So it's, it's just going to remove one stressor uh, while you're taking the test. All right. So as we're actually taking the test, you'll be assigned to a computer at some type of, of workstation. Um, in my experience, it's been like a, like a row of like cubicles or like a bunch of, of dividers set up to separate people taking the test. And um, one thing that's really important about this is that you may have people on either side of you or in the room who are taking different tests than you. They may have different start and end times than you. They may be getting up or coming to sit down because of that. So they're not all taking your test. They're not impacting you. Focus on your test. Don't worry about the people on either side of you and, uh, and just really try to concentrate and, and just block them out as much as you can. One big advantage of testing centers over testing at home is the tech. So you're using their tech. You don't have to download anything. And if anything goes wrong with the computer that you're using, it's not your problem to fix. There's a staff there. They can help you. Um, and honestly, my experience with testing centers and the tech has actually been overall really smooth. The overall experience with the testing center in general um, has been uh, pretty easy, um, at least once I was able to find the building. So that's about it. I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about what to expect from each type of testing environment. Um, I think there are really definitely some pros and cons to each. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's kind of a personal choice. So whatever makes you feel most comfortable. A couple of things as a reminder about testing at home. Um, you need to have a good, clean, clear space to test in. Um, you have that great advantage of not having to travel. And um, you also don't have to um, be maybe as stressed because you're in a more comfortable, kind of safe environment. And then maybe you prefer to test at a testing center. So this is great if you don't have the tech to test at home or you don't want to download anything onto your computer. Um, or maybe you're the type of person who finds testing at an off-site place a little bit more professional, easier to get in that headspace. Um, or you just prefer the privacy. You don't want to uh, invite a proctor into your home. And, uh, and so that's a real advantage of a testing center. So I've definitely done more testing at home than at testing centers. Some of that has been through just necessity of where I was in my life. But all things being equal, I actually probably prefer testing at a center. But you decide to do what's right for you. And hopefully you do great on test day. Um, if this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the links below for a bunch of resources, you know, so not just how to test, but getting ready for your test. So if you need content help, if you want to do some practice, practice tests, practice questions, check out study.com for all that you need, no matter which practice test you're getting ready for. And good luck. Thank you.